In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that, gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, our, are our Father, our Redeemer, you are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways, and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. Oh, that you would rent the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking before you. While you were wrought awesome deeds, we could not hope for, such as they had not been heard of from of old. No ear has ever heard, no eye ever seen, any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of your ways. Behold, you are angry, and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves, and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to cling to you. For you have hidden your face from us, and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you the potter. We are all the work of your hands. The word of the Lord.
guiding the humble to justice. To you, O oh God, I lift up my soul, lift up my spirit to my Lord. To you, I lift up my soul. Steadfast and kind. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way with all discord and all knowledge as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, Be watchful and alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore. You do not know when the Lord of the house is coming whether in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. The Gospel of the Lord. As a Church of Christ, we start the season of Advent and also a new liturgical calendar. 
for the last year that ended yesterday, year A, in all of our Sundays, with exception of the feast days, we have been using the Gospel of Matthew. But for this year B, with exception of the feast and solemnities, we'll be hearing from the shortest of the Gospels, the Gospel of St. Mark. My dear brothers and sisters, Advent is a period of waiting. It is a period that we can say is the expectation of Christ's return and the memory of his first coming, when he emptied himself of his divine glory to come on our mortal flesh. We say in the mystery of our faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Our defense looks at this mystery of faith, Christ will come again. And all our readings today, the central theme we can say is that Jesus warning me and you to be alert and watchful, prepared at any time that he can return. The Holy Scriptures teach us that no one knows the day or the hour that he will come. And therefore, it is a call of us every day to be alert and watchful, waiting for that time. Advent is also a season of hope and a period during which, as Christians, we await for the fulfillment of the promise of God through his prophets. In addition to being a season of hope, it's equally a season of patience and prayer. During these four next Sundays that the church has given us, symbolized by our four candles here, we are expected to live a life of longing of the Son of Man. How do we do that? It is by living the daily presence of Christ in our lives, by our reception of the Eucharist, reading the Bible oftenly, and more also, affairing ourselves to the sacrament of confession. Our first reading from prophet Isaiah is both a prophetic message as well as a beautiful prayer of hope. The prophet interceding on behalf of his fellow Jews who were in the captive. And how is prophet Isaiah doing that? Doing that? First, he begins by acknowledging the greatness of God. We, have, we heard, O oh Lord, you are our Father, our Redeemer is your ancient name. Then he makes this petition to God. Why leave us astray from our ways? O oh, that you tear the heavens and open and calm down. This is a prayer of hope, the hope of salvation to God's people. And just as prophet Isaiah rightly demanded God, this season we are all waiting for Jesus to come and save us. That salvation is what our hope in Christ 
will accomplish for us. Therefore, when Isaiah asked God to tear the heavens and come down, he expect God to come quickly. So also me and you, always alert and watchful, we wait a God who will not disappoint us. That's what we pray always whenever we recite or pray the Lord's Prayer. Your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. It is also St. Paul's petition. It is the cry of the Spirit and the Bride. Come, Lord Jesus. God's power and salvation is what we hope to see at the end of the season. That is, when God's word would become flesh and be born of the virgin. In our second reading, St. Paul prays for the reconversion of the people of Corinthians. It is also an encouragement to me and you to be faithful as we await for the coming of Christ. St. Paul reminds us that we have received the, the gifts of the Spirit. It is these gifts of the Spirit that will strengthen and make us ready to wait in a joyful hope for Christ. If you can recall our last Sunday's reading, when we celebrated the solemnity of Christ the King, we heard of what will happen at the end, when God himself will separate the goat and the sheep. On those who will be in the right, God will tell them, come and inherit the kingdom that was prepared for you from the very beginning. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was dusty and you gave me a drink. I was naked and you clothed me. I was in prison and you visited me. And we heard that these righteous who were in their right, Jesus' right side asked Jesus, when did we see you hungry, or dusty, or naked, or in prison? And Jesus himself will say, whenever you did one of these, you have done to me. And therefore, those are the gifts of the Spirit that St. Paul talks about. God himself has enabled us with so many gifts, gifts that can only get their true meaning where they are practiced to our brothers and sisters. That life is a life of alertness and watchfulness as we wait for the coming of our Savior. We can say that our life is a long vigil, waiting for the Lord to be revealed in his glory. So we are so we wait with expectation and joyful hope because his spirit is with us. If we walk with him in this season, God will not fear us, because our expectation shall not be cut short. So as the Spirit guides us, we must prepare prayerfully through the help of the sacrament. And as I've said, the sacrament of Eucharist and reconciliation. The Gospel today presents to us a short parable of servants and gatekeepers and of the master who is absent. He can come any time and therefore these servants and gatekeepers are called to stay awake and alert. 
it is also a call for us. Jesus, who is our master, who will come again that he may find us awake and alert and alert. Only the Spirit of God can help us to do this faithfully. Therefore, rather than obey the Spirit of this world, this season we must obey the Spirit of God, who sustains us. So let us so let us to have our mind fixed to him. In other words, to carry out our Christian duties with sincerity of heart. It suffices to note that if we light up our houses and our streets and listen to beautiful Christian hymns without writing up our life spiritually for Christ to walk into it, if we were to prepare all things and places without preparing a major for baby Jesus in our lives, then our preparations will only be in vain. Finally, we are eagerly to, anti to anticipate the coming of our Lord Jesus this season. Our hope and our expectation should prompt us to be always awake and vigilant. Should make us prepared adequ adequately in order to avail ourselves to Jesus' mercy. Therefore, our constant prayer and we'll be hearing this in the antiphon of Advent. Come, Lord Jesus. May our prayer during this time enlighten our longing with this beautiful prayer. Because when we, every time we say, Come, Lord Jesus, we're inviting him not only into our souls, but in our families and our country. And therefore, let us pray together. Come, Lord Jesus. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in the love of God, we place our petitions before him. Our response is, Come, Lord Jesus, come. For the Church of Jesus Christ throughout the world, for abundant graces in this holy season, we pray, Come, come Lord, Lord Jesus, come. come. 
for civic leaders and public servants, for a heartfelt commitment to the common good, we pray, come, come Lord Jesus, Jesus come. come, for an end to coronavirus and all disease, we pray, come, come Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus come. come, for the lonely, the lost, the poor and the sick, for hope, help and healing, we pray, come, come Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus come. come. In thanksgiving for the gift of life, we pray, come, come Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus come. come. For first responders and those serving in the military, that they return to their families without harm, we pray. Come, come Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus come. For all of our personal intentions, those previously requested and those which we now make known to the Lord in the silence of our hearts, we pray. Come, Lord Jesus, come. And for the people who are Prince of Peace Catholic Church, we pray. Come, Lord Jesus, come. We conclude the prayer of the faith with the blessing of the Advent wreath. Lord our God, we praise you for your Son, Jesus Christ. He is Emmanuel, the hope of the peoples. He is the wisdom that teaches and guides us. He is the Savior of every nation. Lord God, let your blessing come upon us as we light the candles of this wreath each week. May the wreath and its light be a sign of Christ's promise to bring us salvation. May he come quickly and not delay. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us. And may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Amen. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may, be mer we, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await to the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself completely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I the tender whisper of love in the dead of the night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who It's who I am. 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 It's who I
is who I am. You are perfect. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Don't forget, I think you've all remembered it now, but pass the word to anybody else that by order of the bishop we are required to wear masks in church, except when you're speaking out at the pulpit or singing or something like that. Um, 
Social services, holiday gifts, again, we aren't doing the usual things we've done, but we still give the opportunity to help out with the kids. You can bring a toy and drop it here or drop it off at the office. Um, kids went to eight, they said no bicycles. I'm not sure, but they don't want bicycles. Or you can bring cash that we use to buy toys. And then we'll have a, what we call it's the St. Nick shop during the week of December 14th to 18th, in which people come by and sort of shop for their kids. They pick out the things for their own kids. Uh, so you can, don you can donate to that if you would like. If you want to donate cash for it, and also for the social services, we provide Christmas dinners for people. So if you want to provide cash for that, just put it in an envelope and mark it, holidays, uh, social services, or check this market, make it out to Prince of Peace Social Services and mark for the holidays, and it'll, it'll go to that. Um, our final song prayer is not here, but it doesn't matter because they'll sing it and you just join right in and singing it because you don't have books anyway, so you don't need that. Um, hmm. All right. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Join us in our closing song, Emmanuel. Emmanuel.